Hey guys, welcome to another video from Foolish Engineer. This is an extension of the video from how to select a transistor, which I posted back in 2017. This time we'll look at BJT. We are going to see how a transistor works with simple analogy and all the basic stuffs to properly understand this piece of valuable semiconductor. So let's start. Transistors are very important. Some people say it was one of the most important invention in the 20th century. And these transistors can be used as switch or an amplifier. There are different types of transistors like BGT, MOSFETs, IGBT and so on. Every transistor serves the same purpose but each has its own advantages and disadvantages. We'll start with BGT which is a bipolar junction transistor. There are two types of transistors, which are NPN BJT and PNP BJT, and these are the symbols. This is an NPN transistor, and this is a PNP transistor. It has very tiny atoms. The atom inside this has only one electron. Well, we'll skip the boring and theoretical part of the working of the transistor. We'll see the easier way. Just remember, we are not here to learn about the theory of this topic, but we are more interested in where a BJT can be used and how we can connect it in our circuit so that it doesn't fail. That's it. So initially, you will see the working of this transistor with simple analogy. But before that, we'll see the different terminals of an NPN transistor. This is the base of transistor, this is the collector and this is the emitter. Let's consider a water pipe and water flows from top to bottom. This is the door which restricts the water flow and this door is connected to a spring. There is a horizontal pipe and water can flow from this horizontal pipe. But this water flow is also restricted through this horizontal door which is held through this spring and it pushes this vertical arm to stay closed. This is just a mechanical structure which will help us understand how a transistor works. Let's compare this with a transistor. The upper portion of the vertical pipe is the collector. The lower portion of the pipe is the emitter and horizontal pipe is the base of the transistor. When no pressure is applied to the horizontal pipe, this arm holds the upper main door. Just like if the voltage is applied between the collector and emitter, and if the base is not biased, the current doesn't flow from the circuit or from this transistor. Now if a very small amount of water flows through the horizontal tube, it opens the vertical arm. But this force should be high enough to open this arm. A very small force is also sufficient. If the force is less, this arm won't open. And this force can be considered as the VBE on of the transistor. So when this small pressure is applied, the vertical arm opens and it opens the horizontal door as well. And from the main pipe, the water flows from top to bottom. Just like that, if we apply a base to emitter voltage to the transistor, current flows through the collector to emitter of the transistor. This is also true that a small voltage as low as 0.7 volt and current of 1 mA is sufficient to turn on the transistor. Let's see an NPN transistor BC547. This is the collector, emitter and base. But now for PNP transistor, this analogy is quite opposite. For PNP transistor, we'll see another model. The upper portion of vertical pipe is analogous to emitter of the PNP transistor. The lower portion of the pipe is the collector. And horizontal pipe is of course the base. This is a vertical arm and a door which restricts the water flow from each side. Both of them are connected to a pulley. 
Now let's see the vertical arm. Now when this vertical arm is pushed by water flow, the door is shut. Just like that, if we use a PNP transistor in our circuit and we apply positive voltage to base of the PNP transistor, it doesn't turn on. That means if the positive voltage is applied to the base, the PNP transistor shuts down. But when this water flow from the horizontal pipe is removed, the vertical arm opens and it opens the door and water flows. When we connect the base of the PNP transistor to ground, it turns on and current starts flowing from emitter to collector. This is the simple analogy of a PNP transistor. So these were the analogies of PNP and NPN transistors. Well, we can represent a transistor with diode analogy as well. This is the analogy for NPN transistor and this is for PNP transistors. Every transistor works in three different regions, which are cutoff region, active region, and saturation region. In the cutoff region, transistors are considered as off. The collector and emitter junction are reverse biased and there is no conduction in the transistor. In the active region, the transistor is on and collector current is proportional to the base current. If we see this analogy, the amount of water flowing through a vertical pipe is proportional to the water force applied at the horizontal pipe. So the relation between collector current and base current is given by this formula, where beta is the gain of the transistor. In this region, the BJT is used as an amplifier. And last is the saturation region. The transistor is considered as on, but the current flowing through the collector varies very little with change in base current. So the transistor is fully on in this region. Well, if you want to use a transistor as a switch, we should operate the transistor in cutoff and saturation region. And if you want to use a transistor in amplifier, we should use it in active region. One more important thing about BJT is, it is a current control device. Well, what does that mean? The very simple answer is, the amount of current flowing to the base decides how much current should flow to the collector. Again, remember the analogy. The flow of water in the horizontal pipe controls the flow of water in the vertical pipe. Well, there are a lot of applications where we can use a transistor as a switch and we'll cover many of these applications. Well, when we use an NPN transistor as a switch, we connect a load between collector and power supply and we bias this transistor to its base. When we give supply through a current limiting resistor to this BJT, it turns on. But the PNP transistor is quite opposite. We'll see the different applications of this transistor one by one in coming videos. Till then, stay tuned. I hope you got something from this. If you haven't, you can watch the video again. Still, if you don't, you can ask your doubts in the comment box below. Hit the like button if you like this video, subscribe to my channel, and finally, thanks for watching.